everybody's your butt, Larry. Is he supposed to yell action? Or what? <laughs> Good afternoon. Click. Um, I'll call to order the uh, April meeting of the New Orleans Public Utilities <coughs> Commission. First item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from the last meeting and a special meeting of April 11th. Move to approve the minutes of the regular meeting held March 27th, 2018 and the special meeting April 11th, 2018. Second. Any discussion? We have a motion and second to approve the minutes of the regular meeting held March 27, 2018 and special meeting held April 11, 2018. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, the next item is to receive uh, the report from the city manager regarding utility operations. All right, members of the PUC, the, <coughs> the departments have been uh, active as usual. Uh, to note, uh, the electric distribution crews are working on the changeover from uh, high pressure sodium uh, street lights to LED fixtures. If any of you have been driving around and all of a sudden realize that your street is awful bright, uh, that's the reason why. You know, they keep continuing to do that. Uh, staff has been receiving a few <coughs> telephone calls from my rate neighbors saying I can't sleep, my my bedroom's all lit up. And um, but uh, from a from a lighting perspective. Uh, most people really do appreciate that uh, LED light. Uh, very bright, and uh, you can see, uh, if you're walking on the street or driving on the street, you can see pedestrians uh, from a far distance. All right, uh, electric uh, production, as noted in the Nolan Journal today, uh, you'll note that uh, <coughs> the PUC was fined $4,250 uh, by uh, uh, MPCA corrective action was taken uh, as soon as that was identified and that was that's been a while since that was uh, <clears throat> corrected uh, that actually happened last year and the whole process took us into this year we've got uh, the 10-year gas meter replacement program going on in the gas department the water usage uh, as uh, noted in the report is <clears throat> from March of 17 to March of 18 is up 4.2 million gallons and uh, some of that uh, information can be extrapolated into the wastewater where uh, you notice that we've got uh, 55 uh, million gallons uh, in March of water uh, distributed and we've got 73 million gallons of wastewater collected uh, obviously the difference being uh, other things found in the, in the flow Coming back to the wastewater plant, um, Human Resources had uh, eight major activities. It's ongoing. We're in the final stages of the uh, uh, selection process. We're, we're getting into the interview process for the utility director. Uh, those will be coming up here in the near future, and then we can uh, finalize that uh, real soon. Finance, uh, you'll note that uh, of the departments, uh, all the departments except gas are are reflecting we're 25% through the year. Gas is the outlier on that percentage because they're reflecting a 50% uh, uh, expenditure or, and or gas usage. And that's to, to be understood. The, the heating season is coming to an end. You take the uh, fall of one year and the spring of the next year, that's our heating season. So the summer, uh, we don't use as much gas. So it'll cut, it'll catch back up uh, late in the fall. IT has been very active in, in many areas. We're uh, getting the telephone uh, system, uh, you know, installed, implemented. <clears throat> I think last meeting uh, we uh, we reported that the uh, the switches and and all the things necessary uh, to make the new phone system work have, have been installed. Now we're working on actually implementation. I did note that uh, there will be a few. Uh, telephone number changes so uh, when those all happen uh, we'll make uh, sure everybody knows what the direct dial numbers are uh, for staff otherwise the uh, the public numbers like going into administration or going down to the PUC will, will stay the same it's just as you get out past the main numbers uh, we'll have some uh, uh, newer numbers that uh, you'll have to make note on your <coughs> on your calling tree uh, engineering uh, has been uh, very active in, in uh, many of the projects, tying them up so they can be uh, done. Uh, we have a few items on 
this agenda, which uh, engineering has been actively working on. And uh, I think that concludes uh, my report. And if you want to deal with the employee of the month. Sure, Nate Barron is the employee of the month. All right, and if there's any questions on anything else, uh, call Dan Piercy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right, Dan? Yep. All right. I'll offer the motion to receive an order filed the report regarding utility operations during the month of April 2018. A second. We have a motion and second to receive an order filed the report regarding utility operations during the month of April 2018. <coughs> Any discussion? All in favor uh, indicate by stating aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And that motion carries. Uh, next is a report from the New Alm Economic Development Corporation Coordinator. Ryan Toll, New Alm Economic Development Corporation. Uh, you have my um, March report in your packet, but I'll highlight a few things. Uh, the first is uh, I talked with a representative of a local manufacturing company <coughs> regarding potential incentives that would be available when rehabilitating a downtown building. Uh, we also talked with DLC Manufacturing regarding, regarding the process of seeking incentives and the timing of the purchase of a lot in the airport industrial park. <coughs> we also uh, provided information on vacant lots to a person who's looking to construct cons uh, uh, storage units, uh, not data storage, just you know, throw open the garage door and throw your, your junk in storage. Uh, talked with a consultant who is looking to open a business in New Ulm. Um, Communications with windings regarding uh, the update on the progress they are making on their planned expansion. And then finally, uh, with DLC, uh, we asked them to provide us with a estimate of what their electrical demand would be so that we can make sure that we have a, a, the right equipment out in the airport industrial park. And talked with Mr. Gromnitz about that one. And, uh, any questions for me? Yes, no? Okay, thank you. I'll offer the motion to receive an order file, the report from the New Ulm Economic Development Corporation Coordinator regarding the activities during the month of April 2018. Second. Any discussion of the motion? We have a motion and second to receive an order filed the report from the New Alm Economic Development Corporation Coordinator regarding activities during the month of April 2018. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carried. The next item is to receive a report regarding utility billing software conversion. Commissioners, I just wanted to provide you with a short update on where we are with that conversion and, and how things went or didn't go <laughs> during the conversion. Um, a brief background, uh, the finance department's been using ENCODE since 2006 and just updated every now and then as they had their updates and their software and everything got, went really well. Um, in 2014, they had their major, they released their major new um, version and we updated the general ledger, the payroll, the accounts payable and the project accounting at that time and um, had some bumps with the payroll, but for the most part, once everyone got used to the software, it's gone really well, and I think everyone had liked it. At the time of that conversion, we had planned to convert the utility billing as soon as that became available. Um, and then I was, so I was finally notified uh, last August that they could schedule that update for us for the utility billing and then the cashiering and the accounts receivable. And then those are the final pieces in that older version of the software. Um, so we started that process in the fall. Um, they started configuring the software in November, or October, November. Um, we were scheduled for, or we did it, a week of half-day trainings over the web and, and by phone in December. And that was all with fictional data, just kind of an opportunity for us to see the software and, and get to know some of the screens. Um, and then in January, um, we were scheduled to have a, a week of on-site training with them 
um, due to weather. He was not able to get here from Texas, so we ended up doing that training uh, by conference call and over the web. And really, it did not go well <laughs> that whole week. Um, every time we tried to start a process, it, it, it wouldn't work. There was something wrong where we couldn't get all the way through it. Um, at that point, we started getting really concerned about whether or not we could meet the deadlines that they had set for us and, and <coughs> transfer smoothly. So we kind of asked about maybe pushing the dates back. <coughs> they assured us everything would go well, we'd be okay, and they kept us on the same time frame. So we proceeded, and then um, that first or that first billing in February, February 12th, was our go-live date, and they said they had everything ready to go, and we had um, two consultants <coughs> here. We were only actually only got one consultant for two weeks normally is what was part of the contract. Um, we ended up getting a second consultant that was training, so she was kind of shadowing him. And then we got a third week with him since the training in, in December had been so horrible that we didn't have to uh, pay for there. But during that time when we started going live, we were supposed to get those first bills out by February 12th or 13th. They didn't go out until the following week. They, they went out seven days late. Um, and then they kept troubleshooting those problems and, and working through those. And they spent most of those three weeks that they were here troubleshooting those issues and making sure the bills got out and, and were accurate. So we didn't get a lot of um, learning time in with that for different parts of the, of the software. Um, then coming to the second month of the billing, we had problems with the readings. Um, thanks to Nate, we were finally able to get those after two, um, two re or a second reading of everything in town. Um, we got all that in, so bills were delayed a couple of days that month. Um, and then this month when we did the, thirds, the third month in the billing, things started to go a little more smoothly. There was still a few meter issues and then a couple of smaller issues with the, with the monthly um, budget program since that settled this month. I think we've worked through most of those. Um, we're hoping that next month's bills go well as we start the new budget year. That'd be the only hiccup that we haven't really worked through yet. So we'll see how that goes. Um, we'll have an extra added challenge there as Mary is retiring. So there'll be new staff trying to do the billing while we look to fill that position. Um, <coughs> expect it to go well. Um, we're still working through a few issues, um, waiting for them to help us in formatting issues on the bills, um, getting some extra information on there. But they're working with us last week. They provided us with uh, a consult uh, dedicated support staff person that was there for us to work through with things if we needed to learn something or if we had issues. So they provided that for us at no charge. Um, and then they're continue to, I had a call with them yesterday and then they're available as you know when we need them to work through issues as we get through this before we pay any final payment and hopefully it will all go well and be all tied up here pretty quickly okay. I'll offer the motion to receive an order filed the report regarding the utility billing software conversion second any discussion or any questions for uh, Nicole we have a motion and second to receive an order filed the report regarding the utility building software conversion. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion carried. Final, well, finally under old business is a report from the city manager regarding the 2017 survey of public services. Uh, <coughs> members of the PUC, the uh, city received this report at their last city council meeting. But generally speaking, uh, the results are very similar, uh, if not slightly better than last year uh, for the uh, citizen uh, performance measurement uh, survey that we uh, perform every year uh, in the months of uh, uh, January and February. We had 13 categories increase, and the only area we had a decrease was the finance department performance. and. Uh, I can actually tell you that uh, these surveys went out more uh, or closer to uh, the 25 below zero temperatures when the gas bills were really high. Uh, so I think that's just a, a shadow effect uh, that the finance department <coughs> was identified. It really was, uh, if you actually notice the, uh, the comments at the end, they pertain more to the actual bill than they do activities in the in the finance department so uh, 
but uh, everything seems to be uh, uh, going relatively well. Uh, again, for background, we send out 300 surveys, 75 surveys in each ward. Uh, we received 47% back, which is still a, a commendable return rate, but it is down 10% from last year. And uh, we'll utilize uh, you know, some of these results uh, and, and comments when we look at our budget for next year, uh, both with the city and, and the PUC. Uh, I won't get into the information. Uh, you've all had an opportunity to look at that. This will be submitted to uh, the state of Minnesota. It goes to the state uh, uh, auditor's office. And if you go to their website, you can pull up all the cities and counties that, that utilize uh, a, a citizen uh, uh, survey uh, for performance measurement. The other things that just point out is the the question is the only thing that the state requires. You know, how would you uh, rate the overall quality of fire, water, sewer, streets? You know, uh, <coughs> the other additional information you'll see. Uh, well, let's go to a utility one. Uh, city sanitary sewer. You'll see that you know we've got a, a goal of zero uh, sewage blockages. You know, and so we go back to 2008. Um, and we can we can uh, show the, the the goal versus actual and the cost per million gallons treated. So <clears throat> that can also stand as a measure of how we're, we're doing. It's uh, a little bit finer detail information. Uh, you'll see probably uh, you know if it was a measurement item for for 2018 survey, you know next year that uh, you know we. Electric uh, production didn't want to, but we got, you know, we had an incident that occurred that where we would have been fined, you know, by uh, MPCA. So, you know, that information would go in there uh, if we're following it. Uh, so each each um, each question has the basic information and then some additional information that uh, hopefully uh, helps people understand. Uh, how that department is going you know for question number 10 how would you rate the dependability and overall quality of city electricity services we have the safety Sadie and Katie that we talked about you know a meeting or so ago and so that's a measure of how often we're out of uh, electricity and uh, for how long and how many people are impacted so it <clears throat> it's a it's a tool that that we can use uh, for each particular uh, category uh, of the city and PUC operation. So uh, we do receive uh, uh, about $1,800 a year from the state of Minnesota to perform this. And I will just note that there's, <clears throat> out of the 850 some cities, there's uh, in all likelihood probably no more than 70 or 80 cities that actually do this. Uh, some you know there's a lot of small cities in Minnesota and and you know a town of 350 people you could actually knock on each door and ask them how things are going you wouldn't need to send a survey out uh, in this manner so that uh, that rounds out the survey and uh, at this point uh, if uh, received uh, it'll just go into the file and then if you have an opportunity you may want to pull it uh, back out and, and look at the comments or look at the particular departments to see if that uh, might uh, require extra resources in that particular department to handle issues that might have been identified here. Well, and, and the department heads are reviewing it. Department heads well. will review it, correct, and uh, we'll be working on, you know, any, any uh, suggested proposals that come from within the the organization from staff and in any that might come from the from the PUC itself say maybe we should look at this maybe that would help our our performance a little bit better so we'll we'll likely come with uh, recommendations uh, that may or may not help us you know achieve a higher rating because you just never know I'll make the motion to receive an order file the 2017 Survey of Public Services and Performance Measurement Report. I'll second. <clears throat> Any discussion on the motion? 
We have a motion and second to receive an order filed the 2017 survey of public services and performance measurement report. All in favor, uh, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, that motion carries. Um, now under new business, we're going to receive um, the local selection of the Tom Bovitz Memorial Scholarship Award. Good evening, Commissioners, President Heine. <coughs> Just a quick overview um, of what this is uh, all about on the agenda. Uh, the Minnesota Municipal Utilities Association Tom Bovitz Scholarship Program was created as a public relations tool to increase awareness a public power and create goodwill to the, in the city for the utility. The local governing body or representative of the utilities select a local submission for the MMUA contest. Every MMUA member may enter one essay contestant to the state contest. The MMUA Communications Member Services Committee will select the first, second, third, and fourth place winners statewide. And the winners will be announced uh, mid-May. So I think, believe it was last December, January, uh, the commission approved uh, to once again award $500 to the Tom Bovitz Memorial Scholarship essay winner. And uh, the individual selected was Madeline Spurgeon from MVL High School. So I'm here to ask you to approve um, the chosen candidate and to award her the $500 scholarship. I think attached, if you had a chance, was the letter I sent to her and her essay as well. I'll move to receive notice uh, of the New Orleans Public Utilities Commission submittal of Madeline Spurgeon's essay for the Minnesota Municipal Utilities Association Tom Bovitz Scholarship Program and award Ms. Spurgeon a $500 local prize. Congratulations to Madeline of Minnesota Valley Lutheran High School. I'll second. Uh, any discussion on the motion? I'm sure we all had a chance to read the essay and it was very well written. Mm -hmm. um, we have a motion and second to receive notice of the New Orleans Public Utilities Commission's submittal of Madeline Spurgeon's essay to the Minnesota Municipal Utilities Association's Tom Bovitt Scholarship Program and to award Ms. Spurgeon the $500 local prize. Congratulations again to Madeline. Um, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. same sign. And that motion carries. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, next, we need to consider a bid for um, a vehicle. Good afternoon. Um, I'm here to um, ask for a, uh, we actually went out for bids for a vehicle for the administration department. And um, the vehicle bid is for a metallic 2018 Ford Fusion Hybrid. It's a sedan. Um, this vehicle is going to replace a 2001 Chevy Impala that we have in the administration department. Um, this de this uh, vehicle is basically used for um, travel, for conferences, meetings, schoolings. Um, all departments use it. Um, so there's very little um, in town driving. Uh, it's mostly out of town driving. And what was in the budget originally, uh, we had budgeted for an electric vehicle. And after doing some research and going out for bids, we realized that an electric vehicle probably would not be the best way to spend um, our funds in the fact that um, the majority of the driving is done out of town. Um, the EV or electric vehicle um, has a range of 230 miles. Um, when looking at the specs and, and going through the process, we found that in extreme temperatures, such as Minnesota, um, that driving range could be reduced by up to 30%. So you're back to about 100 and 160 miles um, of use. And any um, using the, an air conditioner or using um, a heater will also can also reduce that. And so in looking at it, we still wanted to do something um, that's environmentally um, good. Um, so we thought that we would maybe um, look at a hybrid rather than the um, electric vehicle. I think in the future, we're going to see um, that range get better, the driving range. Um, but at this point, for our uses, um, we're thinking that um, a hybrid would be better. So the we went out, um, we got bids 
Um, Chuck Spath Ford of New Alm actually came in with the low bid of $23,999.08. This is um, $944.68 lower than the state bid. So I'm asking that um, the commission approve the, the lowest bid to Chuck Spath Ford for a 2018 Ford Fusion Hybrid sedan. I'll offer the motion to award the bid of $23,999.08 to Chuck Spath Ford for the purchase of a 2018 Ford Fusion Hybrid Sedan for the Administration Department. Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. On the motion and second to award the bid of $23,999.08 to Chuck Spath Ford for the purchase of a 2018 Ford Fusion Hybrid Sedan for the Administration <coughs> Department. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same side. And that motion carried. Uh, next is to consider authorizing um, the uh, peak energy gas supply contract program. Okay. Um, we have brought to the commission a couple times uh, the pro this um, natural gas prepay opportunity that's being offered to us uh, from BP, and we're continuing to, continuing to work on it. Um, we have received um, the gas supply contract, and so um, that's what we're here to kind of talk about with you. Um, there's four motions that are on this PUC um, action form. We're actually asking that um, motions one and two be not necessarily considered. Uh, we're looking more for um, action on um, items three and four, mainly because there's contracts that we have not seen yet um, that are important to this process so we're asking we either um, you either decide not to proceed or you decide to table the action uh, we need to have this um, completed by May 22nd and so we're still on a fast track but um, you know we just don't have all of the all of the pieces to the puzzle yet so um, to get into um, some of the details um, we have received the gas supply contract, and and that is the contract that is going to be, <coughs> excuse me, between New Alm and Peak Energy, which would be the supplier of the gas um, with the discount. And the main elements of the uh, the gas supply contract, there will be two separate contracts. Uh, the first contract is a long term contract, and with this, we're asking. Um, peak to supply New Alm with 20% of our load, which would be at index minus um, a discount of 20 cents. And we're looking at that um, contract actually to come out to be about 30 years. Um, the contract will reprice after six or seven years. And at that repri repricing point, if the discount of 20 cents can't be achieved, um, New Alm will have the opportunity to drop out but only for that pricing period. And then when the next repricing period comes up, if we achieve the 20 cent discount, we have to jump back into the transaction. So we're in it for the 30 years. Um, the, by not getting the 20 cent discount, that is the only uh, mechanism for removal from the deal. And so we are committing to a 30 year. Um, the with this contract um, with the long-term contract we're committing to purchasing the 20 percent of our load and it's going to be with peak so over the life of the contract we're looking at committing to about 28 million dollars to peak um, in total gas prices gas costs over the 28 year 20 over the 30 years at 28 million um, within this contract, you also have to be aware there's, there are, there is some damage cl damages clauses in the contract that we need to be aware of. Um, if New Alm were to have a loss of load um, or couldn't take the gas that we committed, um, then uh, we would need to notify Peak Energy and BP. And what they would do is they would attempt to remarket the gas. And, and they kind of talked about this the last time that they were here. Um, they indicated there wouldn't necessarily be a penalty, but when we got into the contract more, we found some language that didn't necessarily um, 
say that completely. Um, there, would, there would be 15 cents of pricing insurance. So what that means is um, we're, we're looking at buying gas at index minus 20. And so they would, we would still get the 20 cent discount. <coughs> However, there would be a five cent administration fee and so that's kind of the insurance right there. So th they could go out and they could remarket that gas. Um, and as long <coughs> as we got 15 cents um, under index, we would be fine. There'd be no penalty and everything would just continue on. If, however, um, they went out and they remarketed it and it came in at higher than index minus 15, um, we, we would be, or I'm sorry, let me start that again. Yeah, if, if we remarketed and came in lower than index mi minus 15, we would be responsible for the difference between um, what, they res what they remarketed it for and our contract price, which is index minus 15. So there is, there is a penalty associated with that. Um, this is similar, however, um, to a con the concept that we have with our hedges. So if, if we are going out and, and we've purchased hedges and for some reason uh, the weather is warm and we can't use, them all, use all of the gas, uh, BP would remarket that gas and we would be responsible for the difference between the hedge price and whatever they were able to remarket it for. Um, Peak, uh, peak would re be required to remarket that gas to a qualified user. And what that means, it's defined as a municipal or a government entity. And so they need to find somebody that qualifies under that in order to remarket that gas. Um, so barring any major event, um, we would assume that this gas would be able to be remarketed because it's going to be cheaper than index gas. So you have that built-in insurance on there. Um, we also assume that Nuam would be able to absorb a loss um, because we're only putting in 20% of our load, actually our base load, right. and we're not including the power plant or the other cities that were. So it actually, if you were to look at you know, our average load, it's, it's, it's less than 20%. And so we assume that we probably could absorb that loss too. Um, the second part, or the other part of the um, gas supply contract is a second contract that's for the short term. And what that is, is to capture our hedges. So we'll receive 5% discount on that gas, and it's only for the short term period. So whatever is decided when they go out to um, sell bonds, it'll be six or seven years, they're assuming. So and that's about our, our hedges go out to 2024. 20, it's about, they're about seven years out. Yes. You, that was five cents, not 5%, right? I'm sorry. Yes, it's five cents. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, and this, um, this transaction has similar contract language as the long term. <laughs> um, so, along with Attorney Hippert um, reviewing, um, we, at the November 28th meeting, the commission authorized participation um, with Austin and Hutchinson to work with Peter Scallion, he's a Washington, D.C. attorney, to look at, you know, all of the documents. There's a lot of documents. Uh, we have uh, ISDA documents, <coughs> amendments to the ISDA. We have a long-term, short-term <coughs> contract. Um, there's three documents that um, Attorney Hippert <coughs> and um, Mr. Scallion have not seen yet, that, and those documents um, are between PEAK mm -hmm. and BP, but it's important that we review them because ultimately it could flow down to us. So um, that's the reason that we're asking you not to um, go with motions one or two. Um, so. <coughs> the um, due to you know peak peak right now is requiring um, all of these contracts between the participants to be similar, and it you have to imagine this is a huge deal, and um, so they have some pretty big players that are in this <coughs> transaction as well, and so these contracts are all pretty much the same for all of us. 
there is some language, and, and hopefully um, Attorney Hippert will um, speak on that uh, in a little while, but there is language that's in some of these contracts that that both him and uh, Peter Scallion would like to have changed. We're not finding that um, Peak is really um, willing to make those changes because they're acceptable for the, the big boys. Um, but there's some, some issues that maybe we have, have with those. Um, I also wanted to kind of talk to you a little <coughs> bit about the savings um, that these two contracts would, would provide for New Alm. So the, it, the average, um, you know, they're not, it's not huge. I mean, we're not talking a lot of dollars here in savings. Um, the annual savings on the long-term contract is going to be about 35000 a year. So if you go out for 30 years, you're looking at about $1 million in savings <coughs> on the long term. Um, on the short-term contract, which is the 5%, 5 cents per MCF, um, it's about $16,500. Um, so that's going out for seven years, so that's at a total about a total of about $106,000. So in total for the 30-year period, we're looking at $1.18 million in savings over a 30-year period. So if you, know, if you were to look at you know, present-day gas prices, it would be an average of 0.8% savings on our total natural gas um, costs over 30 years. Now, a higher savings can be achieved. Um, you need to increase the percentage of gas that you're willing to put into the contract. And, um, you know, we could include the power plant, we could include other things, but you put a higher percentage in, it's going to yield a higher savings, but it's also going to increase the risk that this contract um, could potentially have. Um, for reference, uh, we put in here what it would do to the average customer. And on a February bill, which is, you know, probably one of your <coughs> highest bills of the year, um, with a usage of 133 CCF, um, without the prepaid transaction, uh, we would be at $104.96. With the prepaid transaction, that same bill would be $104.41. So there's a difference of 55 cents. It's 0.5%. Um, so like I said, it's not a huge savings. You know, it's it's one opportunity offered to us. Um, so in, you know, in conclusion, you know, some would conclude that the savings achieved isn't, the wor isn't worth the risk of the 30-year contract or the inability to come uh, to a settlement on the language between, um, within the contracts. Um, the flip side of that is that this is an opportunity to re reduce our gas costs by 20 cents. Um, if another prepay opportunity were come along, we've been through it, we've done it, we've got our feet wet, we know what's going on. Um, and, the, and the other opportunity is, <coughs> you know, we don't know what the future holds uh, with interest rates. Um, because of the uh, repricing periods, we could have the opportunity that um, the discount could go higher as well as it could go lower. You know, we don't know what the future holds. So I guess... Um, Bringing this to you, um, my hope was that we would have some discussion um, as the as a commission to kind of give some direction as to really what what you guys want, um, how you want us to proceed. If this is something that you still feel you want to continue with, um, like I said, I think um, Mr. Hippert will have some comments to make with regard to the contract language. But my hope was to have some sort of discussion and then, um, you know, make a motion um, either on one or three, option one or three of the action form. Did you want to make your comments now? Or? Certainly. Um, uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, as uh, Chris has noted, <coughs> uh, these are actually very complex uh, agreements. In addition to what she's mentioned, I know we finally got some of the agreements that we've been waiting for. I think they came in about 3.30 or 4 o'clock, and I've probably got about four inches of additional paper to go through, fine print. Um, so it's, it's a very complicated arrangement, and it is for 30 years. Um, staff has spent a lot of time going through it. 
we're going to be spending a lot more time if we continue on. And as Chris has pointed out, um, to be fair, I mean, if you wanted to just absolutely <coughs> were sold on this, <coughs> even though there aren't agreements <coughs> to look at yet because they aren't finalized, one option would be for you to just say, yes, we're going to do this. We're not suggesting that. That would be one and two. Um, the third and fourth options are there because you could look at this, and <coughs> I think Brian has got some comments as well. You might just say, no, um, it's just not enough savings. Uh, we don't really want to commit to any contract for 30 years because we don't know what's going to be out there 30 years from now, much less you know, 20 years from now or 10. Um, so that's a decision that all of you could make and just stop it, you know, thank you, no thank you, um, move on and work on something else. Uh, the last option would be to just table it. Um, when Peak made their presentation to you and BP, uh, they were basically saying they wanted this decided tonight. They've got their blackout period. This thing has got to get all set up and done, you know, in May. And <clears throat> when we had a conference call with all of the principals, uh, we told them, you know, we don't even have your documents yet. We're not going to be recommending that the commission would adopt this at this meeting without even seeing what you're agreeing to. Um, and well, okay, and we can probably extend it to your May 22nd meeting. So there's another month there, um, you know, where we would continue working on it. But <clears throat> the savings in the initial price period, which they haven't even told us what that is, <clears throat> estimating six or seven years, um, the 20 cents would only be 15 cents because they are going to be socking away five cents. Um, you know, we've been calculating what our savings would be, I think, <clears throat> you know, assuming a certain usage. And when we're looking at the bills, um, you know, if gas is roughly $4 costing us you know, now <coughs> per unit, that's what a typical customer could save. If gas prices, you know, go crazy and we're having to pay $6, the amount, I mean, we're going to be getting our 15 cents. So what it means for a customer on their bill, they're going to be saving something, but it's not going to be huge. Um, <clears throat> We are, you know, going to be committed to this thing. And um, certainly I would think if we don't take the gas, and we're supposed to be taking this as our first gas, um, if we don't take it, they can try and remarket it, but they're going to have our money in reserve to um, use, you know, to apply if they have a shortfall. A couple big things that I'm waiting to get answers on. One of the things is <clears throat> in their ISDA schedule agreement, which is what they're using because this is a swap derivative arrangement, we're basically, they want us to say this whole thing is confidential. We can't disclose the agreement. We can't disclose any of the supporting documents, any of the agreements that relate to this. And as I read our um, Data Practices Act, we can't. I mean, this is something, I mean, I don't know that any of you are going to want to read through every page of all the agreements that you'd be authorizing, but I think this is a matter of public record. I think that, you know, our customers and citizens are entitled to know what's in a 30-year contract that we're entering into. So I sent an email out to the attorneys representing BP and Peak, advising of that. I just got that out today. I haven't gotten an answer yet, but I told them <clears throat> my request would be to just delete that entire provision. <coughs> whether or not they're even going to do that, I don't know. And if they say no, that's essential, I don't see how we can have a deal. So we'll see what they have to say. The other big thing that uh, I know Brian and Chris and I have got concerns about is to the extent that there's any bonding required by the PUC, could this have an impact on it? Because there are certain credit agreements that we're signing um, where they could have a collateral interest in I believe the the billings that that we have out there, and we did send this to Jennifer Hansen, our bond counsel, and <clears throat> she initially said it looked okay, but there were some other concerns that she wanted some additional time to research, and she's not gotten back to us yet. So there could also be some problems on that end. Um, 
so again, it's a very complicated arrangement. I think Chris did a good job of hitting the highlights or lowlights of it. Um, but ultimately, I think you'll just have to decide at some point, you know, do you want us to continue? If you do, once we have our <coughs> final report, you'll have to decide if the risk is worth it. Yeah, I guess <coughs> for me, whenever I look at a, a uh, program such as this, the, I always go like, uh, winner, winner. Okay, who's who's the winners in this deal? If both entities end up being the winner, you go like, well, that's that's a pretty good deal. Uh, when I when I put the two columns, you know, side by side, BP's got a customer for thirty years. That has some value, <laughs> you know. They've got us locked up. Uh, we, on the other hand, you know, can see the financials. Estimated, you know, twenty cents. Uh, 1.2 million dollars over 30 years or you know 35 thousand dollars on on our our base load is is what we're benefiting from that um but we don't know what the future is going to hold uh, chris pointed out that that it, it it could reprice you know in six to seven years and then it might be that we get 30 cents it might be that we get 10 cents if it's 10 cents we can then walk away for the next six or seven years and come back possibly uh, but the truth of the matter is we probably wouldn't do that because <clears throat> if we're if we're saving 10 cents off a of gas purchased where are we going to find someplace else that can give us 10 cents off a of gas purchased mm. so in all likelihood we're going to stay with bp even if it's not 20 cents we'd have to find some other supplier that that can beat that price and you know what are the odds of that? And so, from 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 my perspective, they're getting a 30-year contract, locking up, you know, a bunch of municipal gas, and that's the the reason they they're doing the municipal gas is because of the their their bonding. Uh, municipal have uh, <coughs> uh, lower interest rate on their debt, and private enterprise has higher interest rate. So we're not even talking about the savings on on drilling for gas or the savings on transporting gas or anything. What we're talking about is they're using the difference in in uh, tax exempt financing and <laughs> taxable financing and trying to squeeze some savings out. Now we can see what the impact is for 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 a normal bill here in, in here in New Ulm. But I don't know that I'm sophisticated enough to know what the benefit is for BP other than they've got us for 30 years. And I don't see us, I don't see us walking away. Uh, so I, I, you know, uh, in, in, in our meetings with Chris, um, Dave, and Roger, uh, 30, you know, 30 years keeps coming up. That's a long time, and we just don't know what's going to happen in 30 years. Uh, on, a, on an average bill, we're talking about 50 cents a month, and I and I totally understand that for some people in the community, 55 cents a month is is 55 cents, you know. Uh, but at the same time, uh, <clears throat> we have fluctuations in 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 the gas industry ourselves in any given year that far exceed $35,000 up or $35,000 down. So when, when you look at how the year goes from year to year to year, I don't know that we would even see this $35,000 and say, oh, there's, there's our savings, there's that 35,000. It's just part of the operation and it, it'd be so, it's so small, it's kind of in the big scheme of the department finances, I don't know that you could pick it out and say, well, that's the year. That's the year we entered into that contract because, you know, look at all the money we saved. I don't think we'll be able to see it. <coughs> so that's, that's my feeling. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, I'm on the fence on it because I'm not seeing anything tremendously valuable. Uh, and, and, you know, I'll go on the record of saying, you know, 55 cents, you can probably go into my couch at home and, and find 55 cents laying underneath the couch, you know. But at the same time, the 30-year tie-in is 
is to me just a long time. And so I, I, I sit there and look at this and I go like, I'm not seeing a great reason to go on. Now, but we do have some documents that we have not seen, you know, and, and I think some some things just showed up uh, today right before the right before the meeting, and I, I did print them off, but I haven't even had a chance to look at them. And I, I'm fairly confident the hours or days it's going to take me to read through those is not going to turn up the pot of gold for New Ulm. If anything, it'll probably just show more concerns that I would have. Th these are between <coughs> BP and Peak, so this is their deal. And the reason this is happening at all is because BP is squeezing the difference between the uh, tax exempt interest rates and what they would otherwise have to pay. They got a 30 year uh, market out there and they're gaming it that way. And if we can get, you know, get an advantage, sure, it would be you know, a good thing for us. On the <clears throat> 35,000, um, a year, I think in some of the numbers we had run, it was only like 19,000, wasn't it? One of the examples we had used. Well, that's on the short term. Yeah, short term. The short term is 16,000 <clears> for the six or seven years, and then the long term is the 35,000. Okay, all right. Um, so, and then, you know, and, and just again, the broader thing, the 30 years we keep talking about. I mean, in my mind, part of this depends upon what, what is going to be our energy source 30 years from now? Do any of us know? What's going to happen if you have a different attitude at the federal level towards the concept of fracking? What's that going to do to the natural gas price and how much of it will be used? Um, <laughs> there's a lot of unknowns out there. Um, so again, it boils down to either tell us to stop this and just forget it or keep working on it and we'll see <coughs> how it well, looks next month. Here would, be, here would be my opinion on the whole thing. So first, uh, going into an agreement without knowing what's all in the contract and the subsequent stuff would be can't do that so so that would have to be looked at um, you know it is a relative small amount of money because we're only going in for a relative small amount of gas um, you know no one you know and, and I think that's actually the smart way to do this if we're gonna do it if uh, AMPI and Furmanch disappeared gas bill coming into town would go down dramatically but I think still be well over the 20 percent that's there um, so at least from that standpoint we would be we would be safe <coughs> that way about falling into penalty arenas at least I don't know if you can look out 30 years but I agree with that's a long time um, but the processes that those facilities have if they're still here are not going to uh, they're not going to, you can't just switch off the steam, which is gas powered. You know, that's the way that those systems work. You can't switch them to electric, you know, without paying multi millions of dollars to do something like that. Um, you know, the other thing, it's not a lot of money per year, but a million dollars is still a million dollars. If you look at the survey uh, that we were talking about earlier, there's a lot of comments about utility rates what's the commission doing to help improve those. I realize it's 55 cents for the average customer. That's not a lot of money. But the other part of that is, you know, some portion of that $35,000 or million dollars is going to be spent here in New Ulm on other things. Um, and so it's not, you know, I guess I don't know how many of will go to Royal Caribbean Cruises instead of, uh, instead of Ace Hardware downtown. Um, but it is money that it's used in a general economy around the city that's, you know, and the old rule used to be it was $7 for $1. You know, so is it $7 million worth of activity that'll take place that uh, even though the, the PUC per chance or the utility bill is only a, is only a part of that. So I'm not, I guess I'm never against saving money, but I, I think the contract part of it uh, is important to know and you know, my personal opinion would be to wait until we know what's in that. And if we have until the next <laughs> meeting, we should avail ourselves of that month. Am I correct in understanding the, the only the, the only reason, the only thing we're losing and not doing it is the savings in the gas. Is there anything else that we're not thinking about that we're missing out on if we choose not to proceed with this? 
the, it's just, just it's the potential savings. Right. It would be the potential savings and possibly the ability to do it in the future. You know, I don't to, know to, to inform ourselves and, and you right. Know. You know, I don't know if we necessarily will be approached again. You know, um, maybe. <clears throat> well, there, there apparently are other yeah. deals in the works. Yeah. We also had a conference call with uh, one of John <coughs> Burmeister's associates. It was very helpful. Um, it was on the East Coast. And he was telling us there were four other entities that are putting together the same kind of deal. Yeah. And he gave us their names. And no, we've not contacted all of them and see what all their documents look like. But BP and Peak aren't the only people in the scheme right now. And, I mean, he had talked about older situations where when prices were higher um, instead of 20 cents this was like a dollar um, you know at that point that gets to be some very interesting money so I mean that's one other aspect of this is there a better deal out there someplace we haven't seen it if there is yeah. so but there could be and something could come up and I suppose we could always have another one one of the other things is the more companies we're buying from right now we buy exclusively from BP we're going to be writing a check to Peak, and we're going to be paying BP as well. So there's going to be more staff time because you're going to be, you know, handling different payments if we go into this agreement. So it's not a huge thing, but it is one other factor. Is that one of the reasons maybe they're they're putting us on a strict timeline because they know there might be better things out there that we would that we could do instead of that? That could be, but I I think it's just because they've got this blackout period. And this, this thing is either going to happen before the end of May or else they have to wait until August, yeah. I think they said, before they could try and pick it up Once again. Once they let out their financials, they have a blackout <coughs> time where they can't you know, do anything like this. Another comment that was, that was made in, in the telephone call simply was, was two weeks ago this was a good deal, but today things had changed within those 14 days that they wouldn't do this deal. That was BP's comment. Yeah. They were saying, which they surprised me, at the onset they said, yeah, we wouldn't, wouldn't be doing this, but now the market's looking better again. Yeah. You know, so, so this thing, this thing is flip-flopping yeah. based on how gas price is going up, and it just depends. We could get to the last date, and, and, the, and the numbers are all wrong again. I, I don't know what they're going to do. The right. risk is on them, though. That's yes. their side of the equation. Correct? It would be, yes. We're still going to get our five cents or twenty cents, depending on what the period is. No, is if they, if they can't get <clears throat> if they can't reach the twenty, they're they're actually looking for a higher discount because we're getting the twenty cents. Yeah. They're taking a piece off, you know. So they're looking at you know they may be looking at a thirty cent um, split between the interest rates so that they get their piece out. So if they get to the t to the point where they're going to be selling bonds and they can't get that twenty cents, um, the de it won't happen. The deal it'll it'll it just won't happen because they won't have met that minimum threshold that they need to meet. Right. Um, you know, it, right? We, but then we've we're been, out of it. But then we're out of it. There's no yeah. So, there's no so there risk to no us at all. Other no. than the city attorney's bill. That's what that's our investment. <laughs> right. That, yes. <laughs> this is under the retainer, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. This is not costing you anything. Oh, more well, than all the of, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so far. You know, um, you know, we've been looking at this for a long time. Um, <clears throat> yeah. You know, back, if you remember Lehman Brothers, this is mm -hmm. not to scare you, but this is a similar process. Um, prior to that, and, and like um, Mr. Hibbert expressed, there was huge savings back then. You know, we were looking at 75 cents to a dollar yeah. um, discounts because there was such a spread between tax-exempt bonding and private bonding. Um, now, with the way interest rates are, you don't have that huge spread. We may end up that way, you know, in 15 years or 20 years. You know, nobody knows what the future is going to hold. But right now, that's so it's so close and so that's uh, you know that was the comment they were making you know two weeks ago with interest rates where that spread was we they couldn't have done it they couldn't have managed it the hope is in excuse me the hope is in by the time they do the bonding that they can right another interesting thing that's going on that, that really doesn't have anything to do with this particular activity 
is just that over the past two or three years, we've been seeing legislation, you know, uh, at the federal level about no longer having tax exempt bonds, basically taking that away from municipalities. Now, that's always been beat back and said, no, no, that's good for municipalities, keep taxes down and all that other stuff, but it keeps coming back and back <coughs> and back. And so, you know, I don't know, you know, 10 years from now and the right people are in, in power and they say, okay, this is this is year we take uh, tax exempt bonding away from cities. Now there is no spread. You know, what what is that going to do with this? I have no clue. I'm just saying in the last three legislative sessions, you know, whether at Washington, D.C. or even the state of Minnesota, those issues have come up about not having tax-exempt bonding because the, the state is missing, and the state and the federal government is missing that tax revenue because they're not getting taxes off the accrued interest. And they're going, we need every every penny we can get too. And so, like I say, that could happen next year. <clears throat> and we have no, no idea, but it's out there. And that, that'll just can this whole thing. It'll all go yeah. away. Yeah, I guess, you know, that is a question we never really posed to them. But I would imagine that what would happen is um, the deal would roll out and then yep. we would be back where we were with... Um, index gas yep. paying full price without yep. a 20 cent yep. discount D does the language speak to how the spread works as far as so right now we're it's a minimum of 20 cents but and then they hold back five so if that spread gets bigger does it speak to who gets what of that bigger spread it does um, <clears throat> we don't get the entire spread um, that's split between us and um, the other parties you know, pe well, peak. Um, I don't have the documents with me to tell you exactly what it is, but yeah, there is, we need to share in that split. But it's from your review, it was an equitable split? Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess uh, from my perspective, I'm, I'm kind of in the same camp as, as Bill, I think. You know, we get the new documents, we, we look them over. I apologize for the amount of work, Roger. Um, but we maybe table this until next next month when we've actually had a chance to review the documents. Did you want to make that a motion? Yes. Yes, yeah, so I will, uh, I will move to uh, table the action with the gas supply contract with uh, peak until May 22nd, uh, 2018. PUC meeting. I'll second. Any discussion? Further discussion? On the motion and second to table the action on the gas supply contract with peak until May 22, 2018 commission meeting. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Um, motion carries. All right, the next item is to receive a report uh, regarding on-site sodium hypochlorite generation. Good evening. Um, at the last uh, meeting, you authorized us to uh, go out for bids uh, for the construction services for on-site generation. Um, <clears throat> we got those bids. Uh, the bids were uh, higher than what we expected, but the bids were all within 15 thousand dollars of each other so our estimate was the one that was at fault uh, because the, obviously the price is closer to uh, uh, what we saw with the bids <coughs> so um, <coughs> excuse me so we've been looking at this and talking it over a lot um, the um, lowest bidder for this is um, uh, let's see was Magni construction um, we've been talking and uh, looking at things one of the reasons our our bid was our estimates were low uh, was that we didn't know until right before uh, the bidding that uh, what the state was going to require us to do we'd been waiting and waiting for the st uh, state to give us approvals for the plans uh, they gave us approvals for the plans, but they put requirements in there that we have to put in um, 
not exactly a duplicate system, but a emergency system to where we would um, have the opportunity to purchase um, a twelve percent bleach solution in an emergency, and then the equipment that would be associated with that, making that uh, system feed at the right rate. Uh, uh, all those are expense, uh, expenses that we weren't planning. Um, there's dosing tanks, pumps, and controls that go along with that that weren't um, weren't estimate weren't in our estimates. Our, our estimate the feed pumps also are quite expensive, um, ten thousand dollars a piece for the size pumps that we're looking at. Um, so that that was a cost. Um, one of the other costs that we're, we uh, underestimated, the engineers underestimated, was the cost to do put a chemical resistant painting on the, on the floors in that building, uh, in that room. We have a, um, a chemical in there already that's uh, sodium permanganate uh, that is quite uh, corrosive to paint, and we've <coughs> tried to do that painting ourselves, picking contractors to do that, and that paint uh, hasn't held up. We've got two different products that we've put down, and both of them have failed. Uh, so that was a, another part of the price. Um, so um, I guess that the, we, we've got the bid documents here. You've got the letters from the engineers. Um, uh, I guess I'm asking is if, if you'd go ahead and approve the the uh, expenditure, even though it's higher than what we had planned. Um, otherwise, I suppose we could wait and rebudget for next year. Um, costs generally don't go down when we do that. I, I don't know that they'd go, how much they'd go up. Um, uh, we've had some of these prices have been holding for us for several months now uh, so any uh, any questions that I could try to answer for you this one and this might be as much for Chris as for you George but you, you talk about the old system requiring more maintenance repair replacement do you have an estimate on the the cost that we'd be looking at going forward if we weren't to um, go forward with something like this like is this actually a payback project I have um, I have some costs um, it's a, under the options considered. Option one has some costs there. Um, one of the things we'd have to add to our system would be a grass, a gas scrubbing system. That, with the <coughs> idea that that would, if we had a catastrophic spill in our chlorine building, that it would capture it there and neutralize it. Uh, that alone would be more than a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Uh, for the equipment. I don't know what the installation would be. Um, every so many years you'd have to uh, replace the uh, caustic soda that's in there. Uh, it's, a, it's a chemical process. Um, it, it, uh, that would, the idea would catch, catch the gas, dump it into caustic soda and make table salt. Uh, but that eventually, the, the, the strength of the solution changes over years, and we'd have to be changing that all the time. I don't know what those costs would be. Um, and uh, even if we did that, we'd still be in the, we'd still have to have a plan on how to evacuate people because you couldn't count on that system 100% to be, to be safe. <coughs> it would still be a hazardous chemical facility with all the filing and, and requirements on that. Um, Option two, uh, just buying a bulk system of chlorine, kind of like I proposed to you. Um, that um, at, the, at the, the, we'd still be at the same cost for the feed pipes and the, for the pumps, uh, the delivery system. It would be cheaper uh, somewhat. Uh, the tanks um, and, and things would be sized similarly. Uh, but uh, the bulk 
bleach solution is much harsher on the plastic tanks. They have to be replaced every 10 years. Um, that's, that's what I had at a plant I had in, in Valparaiso. And I just was there visiting last fall and they are, they found out that their tanks have all started leaking and they need to be replaced. Um, and you, you'd still be a hazardous uh, chemical facility. Uh, so the, my estimate is that that would be more than $100,000 uh, to put in a, a bulk system. Um, the, the option three of getting what we're getting um, or what we're proposing for is that um, we get rid of a hazardous chemical. We don't have to have a hazardous plan. Uh, the engineers looked at uh, looked at some of the costs, and in the preliminary engineering report that they uh, that I, f I brought to the commission last October, I think it was, um, that the maintenance and operation costs of the uh, system that we're asking for now would be a seven thousand dollars a year. Um, savings over the hypochlorite system. Uh, one of the things that, that most of operators and, and people in the industry look at for the on-site generation is that we have no hazardous chemicals on site. What we produce will be a very, very uh, dilute solution so that there is no hazard. If we spill this, we don't have to report to the state. We don't have to uh, we don't have this is non-hazardous and it's one of the things primarily for getting away from gas is the <coughs> hazard and the fact that um, we can if if we had a spill a catastrophic spill I'm not sure where uh, we would get somebody to come and respond to that spill there may be somebody in the cities there uh, there was a Chemtrek response uh, company that was uh, in the Midwest was in Rock Island. Uh, so that's another issue. Uh, the fire department can't handle a spill or, or take care of the leaks either. So. Yeah. Well, actually, there's a hazmat team in Mankato. Yeah, but that's come. not the hazmat team wouldn't yeah. be enough for this. You have to have a Chemtrek. Yeah. Um, well, for and, and I guess for those folks who don't know, it's uh, the uh, sodium the chloride that he's talking about is you know that's bleach. It'd be like having we having a big big old tank of bleach, uh, you know, over at the water treatment plant, and it'll be stronger than the stuff you have at home. No, if you got the bulk one, you would be. <laughs> yeah, the bulk one would be so, about five times stronger than what you have. Yeah, at home. so it's. Uh, really nasty stuff the food industry as a whole there's a lot of migration to sodium hypochlorite uh, actually for all the reasons that George talked about uh, and corrosion of the system and health of the overall system being a big one that it's much less aggressive uh, on piping and things like that so it's it actually is pretty good stuff and just to there one of the questions I've had uh, people call and ask on and I've had the engineers look at this we would only be increasing the sodium level of one part per million. And I think our sodium level right now is something like 40 parts per million. Yeah, you're seeing that not just in, in water, but you know, in, in, in municipal pools, they went from gas to liquid, and now they've just gotten rid of the whole thing and, and, and are utilizing uh, uh, was it Sviga moss or something? It's antibacterial, and you don't have to have any chemicals. That you don't have to have a chemical room, and you don't have to have the hazmat. And so that's where, <clears throat> you know, that's one plus that you, you know, probably at this point can't. You probably could put a dollar figure to it if you really wanted to, but it's not real, probably real obvious. If I could get rid of adding chemicals to the water, I'd be the first one to do that. Uh, uh, and. One of the reasons we went to a sodium high, sodium permanganate was we would we had some more concentrated chemicals, so we ended up putting less of that in the water to do our treatment, and we are getting some natural biological removal of ammonia 
in our filters by the how we run the filters. So, yeah. okay. Well, I'll offer the motion awarding the bid for construction services for on site sodium hypochlorite generation to Magni Construction in the amount of $393,896 and authorizing the city manager to sign the contract documents. I'll second. Is there any more discussion? <coughs> the motion and second to award the bid for construction services for on site sodium hypochlorite generation to Magni Construction in the amount of $393,896 and authorizing the city manager to sign the contract documents. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> uh, next we are to consider a bid for a um, truck. That yeah, this is a, for water. This is a, a, a <coughs> dump truck, a one ton dump truck that we uh, have uh, gone out for bids for. Um, the uh, low bidder is uh, Mayday Motors. Um, there's some a little bit of confusion right now. Um, Maydays can still get a 2018. Everybody else is wanting to price a 2019, and the, the price is uh, higher on that. Um, we had uh, $45,500 total uh, budgeted for this, and uh, the the truck and the uh, uh, hydraulic dump box from Chris Steele would be $40,055. So we've got the budget. I'll move to award the bid of $27,895 from Mayday Motors for a 2018 Dodge Ram 3500 tradesman truck and $12,160.67 from Chris Steele truck equipment for dump box and hoist for the water steam department. I'll second. Is there any discussion on that motion? <coughs> we have a motion oh. and second to award. And I'm unless I'm I'm missing something here, it shows that the Chris Steele is for um, to be installed on a Ford, a Dodge, or a GM. Oh, Dodge. No. But the truck is a Ram Dodge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> they 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 don't want to call them Dodges anymore. Yeah. They want to call them Rams. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, on the motion and second to award the bid of $27,895 from Mayday Motors for the 2018 Dodge Ram 3500 Tradesman and $12,160.67 from Chris Steel Truck Equipment for a dump box and hoist for the water steam department. All in favor indicate by stating aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next, we hear from our employee of the month. Regarding uh, <laughs> cybersecurity, I didn't realize we were going to get uh, that much mileage out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, about a year ago, uh, we had the opportunity uh, from uh, a, a pilot project from the Department of Energy uh, that uh, uh, participated <coughs> in a cybersecurity initiative, and, and you approved uh, for us to move forward with that. <coughs> um, this uh, project was to uh, put uh, cybersecurity monitoring on our network. Um, and uh, to uh, help us improve our cybersecurity posture. Uh, this uh, um, pilot project uh, involved a number of utilities throughout the nation, and uh, um, the vendor that the Department of Energy chose to work with, uh, when I, excuse me, it wasn't the Department of Energy, it was American Power Producers, it was APPA, with uh, grant money from uh, Department of Energy. Um, <clears throat> the vendor that they selected was N Dimension, and uh, the, the pilot project has run its course. Um, I think that uh, on average it was a, a very successful initiative, and uh, it was very, in, uh, very educational for most of us involved. Um, that project, like I said, that uh, pilot project has come to its conclusion. Uh, however, N Dimension is uh, still offering those services to utilities. In fact, utilities are their, their only customer. Um, so uh, the Department of Energy's uh, grant money is no longer available for this, but uh, when uh, we budgeted for 2018, uh, we, uh, the IT department did budget to continue on with this service at the, the full amount that they, uh, they charge for this service. Um, you know, uh, we uh, the the IT department has found this service to be very uh, helpful. 
Um, I actually just pulled up the dashboard that uh, we have available through them and was looking at some of the, the cybersecurity concerns that we have on our network. Uh, it's caught a few things that we wouldn't have been aware of otherwise without this service. Um, and so I would uh, like to have your approval to continue on with this service. I'd offer the motion to authorize the city manager to accept and sign the proposal for cybersecurity services from N Dimension. I'll second it. Any discussion on the motion? We have a motion and second to authorize the city manager to accept and sign the proposal for cybersecurity services from N Dimension. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, next is to consider um, declaring surplus property for the gas department. Move to declare gas meters, combustible gas indicators, and gas leak detectors as surplus property and authorize disposition pursuant to the requirements of the city code and charter. I'll second. Any discussion? On the motion and second to declare gas meters, combustible gas indicators, and gas leak detectors as surplus property and authorized disposition pursuant to the requirements of the city code and charter. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. And finally is our list of claims paid and to be paid. I'll offer the motion to accept the list of claims paid in the amount of two million seven hundred fifty-seven thousand eight hundred ninety-nine dollars and two cents and approve the list of claims to be paid in the amount of $469,594.11. I'll second. <coughs> Any discussion on the motion? We have a motion and second to accept the list of claims paid in the amount of $2,757,899.02 and approve the list of claims to be paid in the amount of $469,594.11. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. And with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>